What's good? This is Out on the Limb, hosted by me, Adam McLeshko. Today is uh, going to be a good episode. It's, it's the NFL Draft episode. Uh, I have my friend Justin Sweck and my other friend Anthony Lombardo. And uh, these two are a bunch of clowns. It's great. They have, they have a lot of football knowledge, hence is why I asked them to be on this episode. So, yeah, uh, thanks for being on this show, guys. Um, I'm just going to get right into it. What is your song of the day? What song are you vibing to right now? Song of the day? Ooh. I don't know. I'd have to pull up my Apple Music and check that out. Um, probably, <laughs> probably anything on the new Dance Gavin Dance album. To be honest with you, I was just gonna say, I was probably gonna say the Spanish song on Dance Gavin Dance. I like what's it? How say hi it. at the end. I like that song a lot. Say hi is good. I like into this with Bill Murray. I'll uh, keep the vibes. Out. I'll keep the vibes going and I'll go uh, We Own the Night by Dance Gavin Dance off a different album. <laughs> um, so, yeah, these two, uh, I don't know what you guys' uh, favorite football team is and then and why. I mean, Justin is kind of obvious. He has a background full of his team. But I have uh, been a diehard Oakland Raiders fan <laughs> since I was three. Understandable. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Patriots fan, so let all the booze come in. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll put a little cheers. We'll edit the uh, booze and cheers in there. Um, and then, as everyone knows, I'm an Eagles fan. Uh, I know they these two do not like that at all. Um, so, what did you guys think on the first ever virtual draft? I'm curious what you guys' thoughts on that was. I thought they did a better job. That it was better than I thought it was going to be. To be completely yeah. honest with you, I was expecting a lot more, especially <laughs> with the the first week. How they said. They did the test before everything, and they had issues with the first the first pick. They had issues with it, so I was expecting something to happen. But other than the fact that every single person that got drafted has a dead parent, I thought they did a ESPN did a really good job. Yeah, I thought it was a good job too. But like, they need someone that has a little bit more, uh, I guess, charisma or personality than Goodell announcing the picks. Because watching that was brutal. Dude, after right after the first round, right after the first round, dude, he was sitting on his couch reading the picks. He was like, I think he was he was he was definitely drunk the first night. You think? I mean, definitely. Him trying to hype the people up was just too much for me. <laughs> Come on, guys. he was he was slurring. He was yeah. he couldn't put words together. He, he was you know cool. what number the pick was half the time. He's trying to hug dudes on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> he has those three D TVs. It makes he was, perfect. He fun. was hammered. He was hammered. <laughs> well, do you guys think with the success of this uh, draft, how it's all virtual, do you think that it's going to change the way drafts are done in the future? Um, yeah. I personally think that they could continue. I think Trey Wingo kind of said something about at the end where if they have the draft at a normal location to still be able to see all the players and stuff getting drafted from like their own home, instead of being there and like coming out in a suit and like, so to see them have that reaction with their families and stuff, I thought was pretty cool. So. I don't know. A lot of coaches say they didn't put in as many hours with this because they were all home and everything. So I think going forward, they're going to, realize they don't have to put in as much time as they do just about every year because I mean they, yeah it makes a lot of them were happy with their picks and they weren't spending 23 hours a day at the facility going over scouting and everything like that like I yeah think, I forget I forget which coach mentioned that uh, I think it was a coach who said that like he had a lot better time just chilling at his house instead of going somewhere like I mean, look at Cliff, King, Cliff Kingsbury. He was living. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. We're going to put that uh, picture out. <laughs> I got, he was living. That was, that was yeah, a sick club. <laughs> so, how do you guys think your team drafted overall? Anthony, go ahead. I mean, it was a typical Patriots draft. Trade out of the first round and pick a bunch of guys no one expected them to. And, I don't know, I'm happy with it. They got three very athletic guys on defense to replace holes that they – lost in the off season, so I mean they didn't go with a quarterback or receiver, which I think a lot of Patriots fans wanted them to, but it's the Patriots, so they're never gonna do what the fans want them to do anyway. That's true. It's Bill Belichick's 
team. Exactly. I mean, he's going to do whatever he feels like. He, he's not going to listen to what everyone else wants him to do. Mm-hmm. And where are his dogs picking? Or, or his dogs going to draft? His dog was the best GM in the draft that week. <laughs> Justin, what do, you, what do you think of how the Chiefs did? I'm happy with all the picks except for one. I didn't like the Michael Dana pick. He's a linebacker from Michigan. I didn't really – I don't know. I don't really know enough about him. And it seems like everything that I read, a lot of people aren't really too high on him. So that's really the only pick I'm not too excited about. Other than that, I think they did good. I like the Edwards Alaire pick. The both of the yeah. corners they picked are both athletic freaks. Uh, that linebacker was probably going to use in the same category as Isaiah Simmons if it wasn't for his off the field issues. So I, I don't know. I like all the picks except for that one. Yeah, that Ed, Edwards Elaire. I, I want to pick him up in fantasy this year. I think he's going to be a stud on that offense. I mean, Andy Reid and Brett Veach were both guys who were around Philly for a while, and they compared him to Brian Westbrook. So that's a pretty pretty strong comparison for – I mean, they, they, they've been around him, so they know, obviously, Andy Reid. So mm. – yeah, and uh, obviously my team, uh, neither of these two like at all. But uh, and I don't think a lot of Eagles fans liked the uh, the draft at all. But personally, I liked it. I think it was different. It was cool. Uh, I just, I just personally, that's just how I am always. I like, I like to be different. And like have, I like to wear random shirts that make zero sense. So maybe these picks that made zero sense, maybe they'll work out in the future. Uh, so you're yeah. happy. I'm, you're <laughs> the only thing I'll say. You're is happy drafting. A receiver. <laughs> it was a second. That was a project. Did you know that <laughs> uh, in 92 attempts, he had nine drops, which let, which was the worst among like the top receivers that were in the draft. It, <laughs> yeah, I, I heard about that. I heard he had some uh, drop issues, Jalen Rager. He's a fast guy. He reminds me a lot of uh, Tavon Austin. That's how I think he's going to end up. You don't think he'll have a Tyree Kill uh, status? Well, Tyree Kill could catch the ball. So, well, in, in his defense, he did have a bad quarterback. If we want to put that in there, but he also played in a conference where there's no defense. Okay, with yeah, TCU. Okay, I mean, but uh, CD Lamb played in the same conference, and look what he did. Yeah, That's well, what I mean. yeah. And the Cowboys took CD Lamb before we had a chance. I, I'm curious to see if they were going to draft CD Lamb before, uh, if he wasn't taken off the board. I'm curious if that was the decision was going to be made. But besides that, I, okay. And then, and then what? Number two, no one liked either the Jalen Hurts pick. And just, just I know Justin has some uh, fault with that, but uh, <laughs> so let's just let's just hear it. <laughs> I got I got a bunch of stuff here. Uh, <laughs> When they first made the pick, it really didn't make sense to me. Um, but the more I thought about it, the more it does make sense, just because of the fact that, like, Wentz hasn't finished a season. He hasn't played a full season since he's been in the NFL. He hasn't played a full season since 2005, before 2015. In 2015, he broke his wrist and missed half of the, half the season. In 2016, he broke his ribs in, the, in preseason and missed the whole preseason. In 2017, he tore his ACL done for the year. 2018, back spasms done for the year. And we saw what happened to him last year. And, yeah, and obviously, so he's obviously probably injury prone. Uh and the last, one thing last you need year, Philly, it's a good backup QB because you know you're going to need it for at least four. <laughs> See, well, the thing to me is, I don't think Carson Wentz is a bad quarterback. He's probably when he's healthy, he's probably one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL. It's just, I mean, they gave him 128 million dollars. Obviously, they believe in him, but I think there there's some concern just because, like I said, he. I think if he has another injury-prone year this year, they might try to move off of him, depending how they develop Jalen Hurts. And I'm, cur- I'm curious how that goes. I mean, last year, I wouldn't say it was necessarily his fault for getting the concussion. Like, J- J.B. on Clinton obviously did fall on his head. Uh, and I'm not going to say that's a dirty play or not. Uh, it, it, people can go look at it two ways. But 
the other years, obviously, he was injury prone. So, I mean, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm not. It's not like I'm super worried because I do think he's a great quarterback. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I do think. Future. I do think Jalen Hurts is going to end up playing next year, though. He will play. I don't think he'll start. Obviously, but he like, no, he's not going to start. But he's definitely going to play. I think, I think he'll, he'll end up starting two or three games because Carson Wentz won't stay healthy. I think I think that he's going to play this year. I think uh, my first initial reaction when they drafted that pick was it's a Taysom Hill situation. Um, I know I texted Justin about that right away. I just I think it, that's exactly what they're going off of it. I think they're gonna they went off the Chiefs uh, uh, resume with a speed, and then they're going right with. Uh, the Taysom Hill, they're trying to mix that in. I, I like that because it's going to take less hits off wins, and I'm sure that was running through their mind. I mean, but they obviously – I mean, they came out and said multiple times already that Wentz is their but number one. If you one. want less hits on Wentz, invest in your own line. That's the other thing, too. I feel – I really think that Hurts would have been there in the third or fourth round because the next quarterback taken was uh, – what's his name? Oh. That went to the Colts, Easton. Oh, and he didn't, he didn't get taken until the fourth round. So I honestly <laughs> think that Hurts probably would have been there in the third or fourth round. So I, I think yeah, – um, And I'm if, curious if you, about if, that. If you believe that Wentz is your guy, why not get him what he needs and help him? There's get good him, receivers in the second round still, too, that they could have used. Yeah, that, they um, – my they friend – They didn't receiver over 500 yards last year. I mean, part of that's due to the receiver group being hurt. But still, if you don't – have a single receiver that can go over more than 500 yards you obviously have a need there mm-hmm. you're gonna waste the second round pick on a backup quarterback he's a little decent but if the season was to start today where do you think your team will go from from uh to this all the way to the Super Bowl if you if they had a chance where do you think your team would end up go ahead Anthony uh I mean it's hard to say right now with the Patriots. We'll have to see how Stidham does. I mean, I still think they're the top defense in the league. They probably have the best secondary. So, And they play in a conference that doesn't really have any powerhouse offenses. I mean, the best offense they'll probably play is maybe Miami in their conference. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm saying anywhere from 8-8 eight and eight to 10-6, and six, and they'll probably sneak in as the last wild card spot because don't forget they added an extra team to the wild card this year. I'm curious how uh, your new QB, Jarrett, plays. I, I like him a lot. I've heard a lot of good things about him. I've heard a lot of good things, too. I saw in the athletic they were talking to uh, Jay Palmer, which is Carson Palmer's brother, and he's been responsible for training guys like Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, to uh, all these game quarterbacks that have come out in the last few years. And he said, this guy's ready to take over a franchise. So. Yeah, and well, I heard as soon as uh, the news was uh, reached that Tom Brady was leaving, the very first person to go in the training facility was uh, was him. He was like ready to rock and roll. So I I think he, he's not a year under the best quarterback to ever play. So like that's true. Let's see, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, turned out pretty good sitting underneath Brady, and who knows? I mean, he's unproven. He, his only pass in the regular season was a pick six, but. Mm was in garbage time yeah I'm, I'm excited about him a lot and I mean you obviously still have Julian Edelman there so that's I mean mm-hmm. that's a clutch thing Justin what about what about your team where do you think they're gonna go the only threat that I see in the AFC is Baltimore and Baltimore got a lot better mm-hmm. um, if Lamar Jackson can prove that he could show up in the playoffs I think the Ravens will probably end up in the Super Bowl but for the Chiefs I I don't see them not making it to the AFC championship, at least to the AFC championship. They're returning 10 of 11 Super Bowl starters. They have eight of their nine starting receivers coming back. They have Eric Bieniemy's back. He got a lot of head coaching off. Well, he didn't, he actually didn't get a lot of coaching offers, surprisingly, not a lot of top tier coaching offers. So they're getting Eric Bieniemy back. Um, you know, I'm Obviously, actually, I, I'm ahead. sorry, I, I said, I'm actually, uh, uh, I'm always scared. Like when the Eagles won the Super Bowl, I was always scared about losing the coaches. So, I, I mean, that's a good thing for you with not losing any coaches. I mean, yeah, I, I think the enemy had a lot to do with their success. He's, he, him and Steve Spagnuolo, seeing videos of them and Andy Reid, they're so, they're, they're player coaches. They, they're, 
they're uh, they're interested in talking to the players and developing relationships with these guys rather than just coaching them. And mm-hmm. I think that's a big key in their success and why they're so why they're so good. And obviously, you see the Andy Reid coaching tree. He's got how many people coaching in the NFL right now that have coached with or for Andy Reid and the past how many years they're all coaches elsewhere and they're all successful so mm. i don't know do you think do you think they have another super bowl running them the two peat absolutely i mean like i just said they, well they i did. i know that you're not big into telling what or into saying what your team can do i mean, do remember last year you said what team can beat them like really realistically and i mean we all saw how that turned out so i, I look I mean, at it i look at it the same exact way obviously like Baltimore got better, but that's really the only threat that I see in the AFC. I don't really think, I mean, other than Baltimore, nobody really scares me in the AFC. The ball, um, that's going to go into it. Wait, first, Anthony, you got to introduce your dog. You got to introduce your dog to the podcast. This is Sonny here, formerly known as Fat Max, but <laughs> he's a, I don't know oh. what he's doing right now. Oh, he's going to fall off the chair. Uh, how old is Fat Max uh, slash Sunny? He is five months old. <laughs> Are you up um, forty pounds? Wow, that's insane. Hey, Sonny, get back over here. <laughs> Come here. He needs to be on the camera. <laughs> Who's uh, Sonny's he, favorite team? If he has a team? Uh, he's going to be a Patriots fan. <laughs> I don't think he has to say anything. I don't know, Justin. Do you think that's a bandwagon right there? Not if you're born into it. Okay, that's fair. Um, so, okay. So, who, in your opinion, was the top five teams, uh, Who, um, excluding your favorite team, who do you think had the best drafts this year, top five? Uh, in order, I'm going to go the Ravens, the Colts, honey. the Cowboys, the Bucks, and the Browns. Okay. What about you, I think? I would go the Ravens, the Colts, Bucks, Browns, and then I, I don't really know. I mean, I would say maybe the Cowboys, but outside of their top two picks, I'm not really too sure about those guys. Um, honestly, I think the Dolphins had, did a good job. But Yeah, that's true. I mean, the Dolphins had a really good offseason in general. Dolphins mm-hmm. did have a good offseason. So I agree with that. I think they didn't need to do that much in the draft. They got their guy in Tua. They got a little – tackle to protect them and they traded for Brita yeah mm-hmm. and I guess yeah. speaking of Brita I think the Niners were pretty aggressive during draft weekend as they well. were they traded Marquise Lee I mean Marquise Goodwin yeah and they traded good. for uh what's his name from Washington the the tackle from Washington oh, Trent Williams yeah yeah so. but, but they didn't sign him to an extension so they only have him for the year at this point unless he decides to stay obviously right um for me personally, I think it, um, I, I I was agreeing with everyone uh, with the Ravens. I like the Bengals. I like the. I'm not saying that's a, a number two for me. I do like they the Bengals. Did a good draft too, I think. Who? The Bengals. I thought they did a good job. Yeah, I was I was pretty impressed by what they did, um, especially Joe Burrow, T. Higgins. I think that's a great duo right there. I like um, the linebacker from Wyoming that they got. Yeah, like, I heard he was. He's going to be special talent. That's what I heard. He's a full field linebacker. He can go sideline to sideline. His only knock on him is he played at Wyoming. He didn't play against the Power Five teams. So, mm-hmm. interesting to see. I mean, he's in. The, they're in the AFC North, so you know you need to have a good defense. Yeah, and no one, no one agrees with me, but I like uh, the Joe Burrow John Ross combo. That's going to come if Joe if John Ross can stay healthy. I just think that's going to be a hell of a duo right there. I don't know if you. Guys I mean, John that. Ross did have. I wouldn't consider it a breakout year last year, but I think he started he to show hurt. signs. I think he started to show signs that he could be that player that they expected him to be. That they mm-hmm. wasn't he a top? He was a top ten pick, wasn't he? He was. Yeah, yeah I believe so. So I no, think yeah, 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 yeah. He was. He was definitely top fifteen. Yeah. So I think last year they started to see a glimpse of that player that they drafted, but. Again, it comes down to if he could stay healthy. The thing is now with adding T. Higgins, hopefully you have A.J. Green back healthy, and then you have um, – what's the other? Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd. You have uh, true. 
three other options there that they don't have to rely on John Ross that much where you can use them in jet sweeps, uh, fires and stuff like that, where he's not going to be on the field for that many snaps. So hopefully he can stay healthy. Did you mention their tight end, Tyler Eifert? Tyler he's Eifert is in Jacksonville. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I forgot. They don't have a tight end now. So. They don't. They, uh, maybe they'll try to make an, a move. But, I mean, they also have some good running backs. So, I like that. I mean, I think their team's going to be good this year. Um, they, and need then, to, if, they need to restructure Joe Mixon's deal. If they can't get a deal done with him, they're not, he's not going to stay there. Mm-mm. No, I, I, I agree with that. Um, and then my other, my other pick was uh, the Colts, just because I like Michael Pittman. I think Michael Pittman Jr. is a great uh, wide receiver. Pittman and Jonathan Taylor were good picks. And I think Jacob Eason, if you give him a couple of years to develop, maybe under Philip Rivers, he can – I mean, he has all the arm strength in the world. It's just they can get his mechanics down and limit the mistakes. I think he'll be a good starter. And when I was talking to you guys during the draft, uh, I love the Jonathan Taylor pick. I, I think I think that guy's just going to be a su- huge success in the NFL. But you guys, I think Justin, you had a different view, uh, saying that he had too many touches during Wisconsin. I didn't say. I said he had too many fumbles. Oh, okay. I think I, he, had, he had too many touches. I mean, he had yeah. four hundred career carries at Wisconsin. That's a lot of tread. Yeah, and I I agree. I think I think he's just I I don't know. I like him a lot. And then, he doesn't need to be in every down back because they have Marlon Mack. That's true. So he's yeah. not going to be a three down back. I mean, he's going to probably – I think he'll be a first and second down back, and then they'll bring, he's going to split carries with Mack, and we'll see. Can you imagine if uh, Andrew Luck was playing this season? That, I think that could have been a cool uh, little combination there. Yeah, that would have been interesting to see. Yeah. Like. Um and then, so after the – so went Ravens, Bengals, Colts. Um, I was or I was going to say Miami as well. I like – I just like everything they did, including off season. Like, they literally – I think they finally said, you know, now that the Patriots don't have Tom Brady, they're going to try to make a run for it. <laughs> I feel like they got excited now all of a sudden. I still think Buffalo is probably the best team in that division, but I think yeah. – mm-hmm. Miami yeah. – I mean, we'll see how it works out for them. But the, if you think of it, they br- Brian Flores brought in Van Noy, so he's going to play the same role that he did in New England. So hopefully he'll mm. do the same, same production there. Um, they brought in Byron Jones, who's probably a top five corner. And I like that corner they drafted out of Auburn too. I think he's going to be good, and he doesn't have to be the number one corner there so because they have Byron Jones, so he's going to get a lot of time to develop. That's true. Imagine if they didn't get rid of Minka. That would have been kind of cool to see what happens with that. I mean, if that probably, it probably would have been a pretty – that would have been a solid defense. Yeah. I still think it will be a solid defense. I mean, the only question is really is their defensive front because they don't really have a great pass rusher at this point. Mm-hmm. That's fair. And – oh, whoops. Uh, did I turn it off? All right, cool. Um, yeah, and then – as uh, the the last pick for me was Dallas. I liked everything they did in that draft. As much as I hate to say, like them picking up CD Lamb, I don't think they need it necessarily. Him, my friend, made up a good point uh, from my Eagles podcast episode I made. But he thinks personally they should have went for McKinney over uh, CD Lamb in that situation. But that's they took just because you. That's just because you guys wanted CD Lamb. <laughs> well, he he made it. He made a good point. Like they like that extra linebacker. Like him and Leighton Van Der Esch together would have been a good combo. Um, I think they should. I think they probably should have gone defense too, just because of all the holes in their defense now. But one secondary. But I don't. I don't really think there was a corner or someone in the secondary that was worth taking at that point. Especially plus they got digs in the second round. So yeah, they exactly. did get digs. Yeah, no, I loved – I loved. Uh, I actually liked them picking up C.D. Lamb. I think for their team personally, that's going to be a huge thing with Amari, Michael Gallup, uh, and then C- and then C.D. Lamb. That's going to be kind of scary. But you also got to think about what about if Dak Prescott kind of sits out because they didn't pay him yet. I was thinking about that too. I don't see that. I don't see that happening. I don't think he pulled out. I don't think he's that type of player. I don't know though, and I mean we we all have time to tell because I heard that the the season might be a little uh, late, like delayed possibly this year. I don't know how true that is, but um. So were you surprised that there was no trades during the first round, or uh, like I mean going into it, I heard a- a- everyone was gonna you know trade. Were you guys surprised at all? 
there was trades in the first round. There was just no trades in the top ten. Not, not, there like, weren't, not, there weren't really any big trades that made right. you like, oh my goodness. There was like people swapping picks and stuff. Packers. That was really about it. The one that got me was the Packers trading up to get Jordan Love. That, that didn't make any didn't make sense. sense. That, no. that, that was one of your questions. That's my surprise pick, to be honest. I, I didn't expect that. I've never seen one organization with, like, a generational talent do absolutely nothing to help them the way the Packers have. Like, they've wasted Aaron Rodgers' career. Do you think that's more disrespectful to Aaron Rodgers than anything? I, I think it is right now. I Personally, I don't because, like, they did the same thing with Brett Favre mm -hmm. and when Aaron, when Aaron Rodgers came in. So it seems like they're, they're focused on going forward like they're they know that Rodgers is their guy, but they're focused on somebody who's going to be there like three or four years from now that can step in. And plus, Rodgers past couple of years has had some injury issues as well. Yeah. So I think Jordan Love's going to be a project. He's no he's not anywhere near as ready as Mahomes was when he was coming out. Because I mean, I know that was a lot of the comparisons Love was getting, but I think looking back on it, Rodgers definitely has more than what Favre had left when they picked Rodgers. To replace that's true but I, mean, I just think the fact that they didn't draft him a single receiver in that entire like the entire yeah. draft I, I haven't I haven't kept up with the undrafted free agents they picked up I don't know if they picked up any receivers yet but right. the fact that they didn't draft one is kind of really surprising to me they didn't make any type of moves for one they're coming off a 13 and 3 season where they made the NFC championship game you would think they'd want to be in a win now type of mode because, I mean, you would like, think it's not like, yeah, like it's like Philip Rivers where the, he can't throw the ball anymore. I mean, I think Rogers still has a good five to seven years left in his tank. And look yeah, at those, was, look at those games that they lost, those, those blowouts that they were in against the Niners. They, yeah. well, they obviously they couldn't stop the run. That was a big part of it, but they couldn't score points. Right. And I mean, obviously, if you can't score points in an offensive driven league now, you're not going to win games. You need more than one receiver. Right now, all they have is Devontae Adams. So teams are just going to take Devontae Adams away. And what do you have then? Rodgers can't do everything himself. He can only throw guys open so many times. Yeah, I agree. And I, that was going to be my question. If you guys, how many years did you think Aaron Rodgers had left? And I think, I think personally with um, the way Aaron Rodgers came into the league, I feel like he kind of understood, like, uh, you know, he, he lived through it with the, uh, you know, getting drafted while Brett Favre was still there. So I feel like he still understood what was going on. But I feel like that kind of had to bum him out a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I'd be, if I was – I'd be pissed off too. Like I said, you're 13-3 and three coming off an NFC championship game where if you have maybe one or two more weapons, it's a closer game. Maybe the Niners can't, you know, just grind the ball and run it down your throat. If you're putting mm -hmm. up they're going to be forced to have to score more points themselves. So – if you don't give the guy weapons, you're not going to be in those type of games. That's exactly what I said, too. It, it, the fact that they didn't draft a single receiver, make a move for a receiver, any type of yeah. off-season move to get some type of skill player, it, and like the, it doesn't make any sense. The running back they added, he's not going to add anything to the pass game. He's a, and they already have two solid running backs. Right. So <laughs> to add yeah. another running back doesn't yeah, make sense. I think A.J. Dillon's going to be a good back in the league. Like I think he's going to be a poor man's version of Derrick Henry. But I don't know. That just doesn't make sense to me. No, what was it? What was the stat? I think it was like 27 receivers and it was like the fifth round or something that were taken and not one of them the Packers took. I, I thought just just interesting. Like, how could you not like this was such a this was such a hyped up wide receiver draft this year and nothing to show for it. So yeah, it was I mean, probably I, one of the deepest receiver classes that they've had in a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean they might they might make trades or something, who knows? But I, I still think you want to try to get a young speedster in there for Aaron Rodgers to have fun with, along along with Devontae Adams right there. But um did you think there was gonna in the top five, did you think there was gonna be a trade? Uh maybe the Dolphins or the um Giants? I thought maybe the Lions or Giants were going to trade. Um, I knew the Lions wanted Okuda, and I feel like they could have traded out to the number six or seven pick and probably still got him, but I don't think they got any offers for it. So, Yeah. What do you think, Justin? 
I thought that Miami was really high on Burrow, so I thought that they were going to try to do something to get up to one. And all the reports that came out said they were going to do something to get up to one. Mm. Um, I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't really surprise me though. The the up until honestly, up until the Jordan Love pick, the draft was pretty predictable. Yeah, I think so too. I mean. The only other trade before that was the Niners and Bucks swapping picks just so the Bucks can get their tackle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it it was it was really it was pretty predictable what was going to happen. So I mean, I wasn't surprised yeah. that the Patriots traded out of twenty three. I assumed they were probably going to trade down because that's what they always do. They never, unless they're really high on a guy, they're never going to trade up. So. Yeah, I don't know. I can, do you remember the last time they even traded up? I'm actually I – don't, I don't know that. that I mean, happened. they traded up a few times in, like, the third round. and so. I mean, they mm-hmm. had traded it into the second round, but that was part of the Chargers trade. But right. Was Nikhil Harry their last first-round pick? Yeah, yeah, that was last year, yeah. Um, so, who was your t- uh, top picks in the first, in the first round of this year? I'm going to show a picture r- right now of uh, the, the thing of the first round. Now you guys won't see it, but uh, what? who was your top picks in the first round this year, in your opinion? Uh, the obvious one is Chase Young, just because right. he was the most NFL-ready. Mm-hmm. Um, the dude's going to be a monster. He's one of what I think I saw, like, six players to be graded 99 coming out of the draft. The dude's going to be a monster. He but was compared to J.J. Vianney. I think he might be better. But – um. I like the Patrick Queen pick to the Ravens. I think he's going to fill a hole that they needed. They, Cause they, after, since CJ Mosley left, they really haven't had that solid linebacker. And I think, um, I think the Patrick Queen pick is going to be really solid for them. Mm-hmm. I like the two chargers picks. I mean, I think Herbert's going to have a chance to sit underneath Tyrod. Tyrod's a good pro quarterback. He'll teach him the ropes of the NFL and who knows? I mean, he may only start half the season and then they hand it over to Herbert. But the Kenneth Murray pick, I mean, he's a fast middle linebacker. He plays in a division with the Chiefs, so he needs speed on defense. Mm-hmm. I think he can cover sideline to sideline. He might be able to cover Kelsey a little bit better than anyone they have. The other thing with the Chargers, too, and the Ravens as well, is they both dip, they don't have a lot of holes on their roster that they need to fill. And I think they both teams filled holes that they needed to, right. to fill, which makes it a lot easier to draft because they both have very solid teams. Um, they were Both teams are probably a player or two away from being a contender. That's why I feel so. That's why I, the only team I'm afraid of in the AFC is the Ravens. They, uh, they're really the only team that scares me. The Chargers, I think, are still going to be average. I think they're going to be the second uh, team in the West. Uh, I don't see the Broncos or Raiders being that great yet. I think the Broncos in a few years. The Broncos have a good offense, though, now. It depends how Drew Locke develops. I mean, we only saw, what, three games of him last year, so. I And I, I asked you guys this during the draft, but I'm going to bring it up again. So, I do like the Jeff Okuda pick for the Lions, but, like, I don't know, in my mind, like, they – traded away Darius Slay and I feel like in the draft you're trying to beef up your roster like you're you're trying to just fill in that one key piece to try to make your team a contender I felt like with them when they traded away Darius Slay they kind of had to rebuild and I feel like that it kind of takes away the purpose of the draft and like I don't know I want to know what you thought about that a lot of team, every team does that with their quarterbacks, and they know that they're going to move on from somebody they need to pick somebody up to fill that hole so I think that's kind of the same way that I look at that, they knew they were going to lose Slay, so they had to mm. they had to have something planned to fill mm. that hole that they lost. The way I see, they got they freed up a bunch of cap space by trading them, and you basically replaced them with Okuda, who I think is easily the best corner in the draft. To, in my, oh yeah, he was the only one worth drafting in the top fifteen. Outside, yeah, of, and no, I'm uh, sorry, keep going. Uh, I was going to say outside of him and Chase Young, like. They were the only two defensive players I thought deserved to be in the top 10. I think from day one, you're going to get a lockdown corner with Okuda. So. Yeah. And, and I said, and the only reason why I thought that is just because I was thinking like, if you had Slate and then Okuda, like that would just be overkill for a defense for uh, corners. I think that'd be a great 
uh, scenario. I mean, I'm not complaining as much because we hit that we have Darius Slay uh, for right now, but um, I was I also liked uh, the Dolphins. I I liked how they risked to get Tua. I I don't know how I feel about him. I was gonna react in the draft or in the NFL, um, but he could be like a Russell Wilson. I I like him a lot. What do you guys think on that? Well, he gets to go to go somewhere where there's a veteran quarterback who's been around the league for a while. There's no rush for him to start. Um, mm-hmm. I think he could learn a thing or two from Fitzpatrick. I think Fitzpatrick will have his normal three or four games where he's just playing out of his mind, and then he'll probably start to decline a little bit. And I think depending on how the season is going for them, they're either going to ride out with – uh, Fitzpatrick, or I could I could see Tua coming in halfway through the season to try to do something. I think if Tua wasn't coming off a serious injury, he'd probably be starting by week three or four, but I think because of the hip injury, they're going to try and ride out Fitzpatrick as long as they can. And then I agree with that. Probably by week 10 or 12, depending where they are in the playoff race, they'll switch to Tua to get him some experience going into year two. That's a really good point. Um, before I go to my next tr- uh, question, Justin, I got to know, how many? what are your jerseys in the background? You got to show them off. Because, like, I know you're a huge Raiders fan, but you just have a lot of Kansas City stuff. <laughs> so we got, our, we got our Frank Clark Super Bowl jersey. We got our Kelsey. We got the best player in baseball with Merrifield. <laughs> He's probably going to best ever do it, Dwayne Wade. And then up there we got our we got the king we got the king himself. Who's that? Is that 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 can that that sounds like a really bad name and a quarterback? I, I think he sucks. It's a Tom Brady jersey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, so. what, do you, what do you think on that? <laughs> I mean, Brady's a forty-three-year-old legend, so like. <laughs> that, yeah, that's why I have his jersey hanging up here. Exactly. <laughs> um. In this draft, who do you think had the best overall first-round pick? Because, I mean, obviously everyone's going to think it was their best, but who do you think had the best overall first-round pick in terms of situation or just anything? What do you – like the best player or the, which team drafted the best? Which team drafted the, had the best overall first-round pick? I wouldn't say player because player I would say probably Joe Burrow or Chase Young, but um, who – like in terms of their, the way the team had it uh, situated, like what their situation was – I just was curious who you guys think had the first overall best pick. I'm going to stick with Patrick Queen and the Ravens. I think the Ravens' first four rounds, honestly, were they they hit them right out of the park. Because mm-hmm. they got Patrick Queen, J.K. Dobbins, and then later in the fourth round, they got that Devin Duvernay. I think – I honestly think the Ravens hit their first – and they had, Five picks out of the park. Roche in the sixth round too, and he had his big production out of SMU. That's mm-hmm. what I mean. I think I think they had a very solid draft overall. And they, uh, the two receivers they added don't drop balls, and that was the biggest issue the Ravens receivers had this past year. They had a lot of drop passes, and they added two guys that combined. I'm pretty sure only had like six career drops through their college career. Um, Anthony, who do you think had the best overall first round pick? I, I'm gonna go with the Chargers. I think they added their fr- they got their franchise quarterback in Herbert. Who I mean, I think people have knocks on him because he didn't really progress very well at Oregon. But if you look at what he was throwing to at Oregon, he when's the last time Oregon had a first round skill player drafted besides Marcus Mariota? That's true. Um, he's screaming. He's Was he a first round? Mariota. No, no, Royce Freeman was a second. Yeah, Freeman was a second, yeah. Um, I mean, he's went to a team that has Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Hunter Henry, Austin Eckler. He, he's going to have weapons, and he's going to be able to sit underneath Tyrod, who's been a proven quarterback who can show him how to be an NFL quarterback. And then they got Kenneth Murray at 23, which I think he's going to be a candidate for defensive player of the year because he's one of those guys who can fly over the field. He can cover running backs. He can cover tight ends. He can pass rush. They can put him wherever they want. And I think he's a high quality locker room guy too. So that's true. Howie, Howie, I told you we were, 
when we were on uh, Skype for the draft, I told you I didn't want the Chargers to get Herbert because I was afraid of him developing into something good just because of what's already around him. Yeah, I yeah, I mean he's what he had a over a four point oh GPA. I mean the guy's it's not like he's dumb. I mean he's a smart guy, and so developing in that system could be very beneficial. I, he already he already pretty much mastered the playbook because I heard a story coming out. They quizzed him on the playbook, and he only got one formation wrong out of the entire playbook. That's crazy. Draft him. <laughs> so like, I mean, the guy's gonna be a quick learner. I think it's just gonna be how they develop his footwork. They develop some of those throws that he probably shouldn't have made at Oregon. But at this mm-hmm. time, he's going to have – he has two top receivers. He has a very good tight end, and they're going to have a run game. And they just upgraded their offensive line pretty well. They traded for that Trey Turner at guard. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and then – I, I would want to say obviously the first round the first pick with Joe Burrow, but I'm, I'm gonna want, I want to be a little different. I liked Isaiah Simmons going to the Cardinals. I just think the Cardinals had a heck of a you know turnaround with getting DeAndre Hopkins and then adding a good defensive member with Isaiah Simmons. I think that's just huge for them. So that's so I think I'm gonna go with them uh, as my best overall. Um, I think well, Isaiah Simmons has a chance to be one of the best players in this draft. So. Well, I heard um, – I forget who was talking about it. It might, uh, might have been on ESPN, but they were saying, like, how he's, like, the next generation of, like, the future linebackers in this league. I wouldn't even know if you call him a linebacker. If, if you look at where he played in college, he played mostly at safety or in the nickel. I mean, Which is – Which is what Howie's saying with, like, the next generation. Because it right. seems like a lot of these linebackers – like, did you – I don't know if you saw, but the uh, – there were th- – three linebackers in the draft that ran the 40 time and under a four five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what you need because the, with uh, how prevalent the tight end position is becoming, you need guys that are bigger and can run. Cause I mean, mm-hmm. you got to Dante Hightower. I mean, he's a great middle linebacker, but he's not covering Travis Kelsey or George Kittle or uh, Ertz. Like, you're left out on your own there. You need guys that are, have the size that can go up on a jump ball with them, but also the speed to, to keep up with them. That's true. That's a really good point. Um, Justin, before before we go into our next one, where's your Derek Carr jersey? I didn't get to ask that right after. <laughs> it's next to my toilet for personal reasons. <laughs> oh, you just, do you like to look at it when you're – okay, I, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so who was uh throughout the whole this now this is this is a big question but throughout the whole draft uh that you can remember who was the biggest surprise uh to be drafted in your opinion this is a this is a hard question i was just kind of curious if you guys had anybody in mind i, I said it already that jordan love pick that was yeah, that one because the whole for the whole first round was very predictable except for that pick that just kind of stood out to everybody that um, and the Jalen Hurtick, they were – New Year was a surprise to me too. That was, yeah, that was a surprise to me as well. I thought for sure the Eagles were going with, like, Justin Jefferson or someone at that point. Well, if they were smart, they would. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I didn't want to pick my own team, but I think uh, for this it was going to have to be either Jalen Rager or Jalen Hurts just because no one expected those picks to be there at that time. Uh, That's because they weren't – well – Rager wasn't a first round talent and Jalen Hurts wasn't was he was still gonna be there in the third or fourth round as well. So usually when you uh, reach for a pick that nobody's <laughs> expecting you to reach for, it's gonna be a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first on this podcast. But who do you think is gonna be a sleeper in this draft? Uh that I, I'm just I, I I think I can go with a couple here. Um, like I could mention Jalen Rager, I think he could be a sleeper. Like, cause I mean, obviously, you just said like he wasn't the first round talent. But who do you think could be a sleeper? Uh, it could be any team that you can think of. I'll let Anthony start. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't think Dobbins is going to be a sleeper, but I was surprised he slipped as far as he did. I was too. I think him and Mark Ingram are going to be a great combo for the Ravens. Um, I don't know. I think the Patriots second round pick Kyle Duggar. Not a lot of people are expecting him to go there. He can go one of two ways. Either he's going to – because the guy's an athletic freak. Tested in mm-hmm. the 99th percentile out of all safeties in the last 20 years at the combine. So, 
he has a lot of upside, but the thing is he was a D2 talent. So he could either be a great safety because he's got size, he's 6'2", 220, or he's going to flop like most Patriots second-round defensive backs. Because, I mean, if you look at the last few years, every, sec- every defensive back they took in the second round has flopped. So, and then what I, you have, I have two. I'm going Grant Delpit and I'm going Bryce Hall. Um, Delpit surprised me. I know he uh, wasn't as productive his senior year, but I still thought that he was – I still thought he was pretty solid, and I'm surprised he dropped as far as he did. Mm-hmm. And same with Bryce Hall. I really – I thought the Chiefs were going to take Bryce Hall. Um, in the in the fourth round, he was still there at 138. I thought they were going to take him. Uh, I guess a lot of teams were concerned because he had a foot injury, I believe it was, and they – I guess he uh, – I don't think he participated in the combine. So a lot of people were kind of iffy on if he was going to – like how he was going to be health-wise. So surprised he dropped as far as he did, but – I I think if he's healthy, he's going to be a very solid corner in the NFL. Yeah, um, I have I have two as well. I'm going to go one KJ Hamler for for the Broncos. I think putting him in the slot, I like that a lot. You guys don't agree with that at all? No. <laughs> His upside is Tavon Austin. Tavon Austin. Okay, that's a, yeah, I could agree with that. Um, and then. I would say Tommy Stevens for the Saints because he got dropped. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I, I saw. I. I was. I mean, good for a shout to Tommy Stevens. But uh, anyway. what are what are the Saints doing? They have four quarterbacks now. I don't understand that at all. <laughs> I don't think. Like, all I, don't under, I don't understand why you go out and pay Jameis and then re-sign Taysom Hill at the same time. It doesn't. I don't get it. No, I agree with that. What, what do you? Who do you think is the backup? It has to be Taysom Hill in that situation. No, I, I think it's. I think it's still going to be. It's going to be Jameis, but I think that Taysom Hill is going to have more of an offensive role. Bless, Bless you. you. I yeah. think it's going to be like last year, where how Bridgewater was the backup, but Taysom Hill was a gadget plug. plug. Uh-huh. So I think that's what they're going to do. Winston will be the actual backup in case Breeze gets hurt, but they'll put in packages for Taysom Hill. The uh, I, ESPN. I don't know if you saw it today. ESPN kind of made fun of Jameis Winston. They were showing how many completions Taysom Hill had last year to the Saints, and then how many completions Jameis Winston had to the Saints. <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny. I, I don't know how people how Taysom Hill thinks he's going to be a starting quarterback in the league when he went three of six for like fifty six yards. <laughs> yeah, he, I mean, I, I like the guy. I don't know if he's a starter though, like you said. I mean, he's um, an athlete, but he he's not a quarterback. No, he's he's a better version of Tim Tebow. Okay, I I maybe, maybe Tommy Stevens steps up steps up into the backup role. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> See, I'm a sleeper. Is be practice squad if he's lucky. <laughs> um, but no, I I am gonna go for the Eagles. I like that Quez Watkins guy from Southern Miss. I, it's just uh, uh just when I heard him draft him, uh, I looked I was looking him up obviously, and just people calling him like. They think he's going to be a surprise in the draft. And announcers who were calling his game said GMs would be happy about this guy. It's just he is – I think he has 4-3 speed, so I'm pretty happy about that. But, again, they drafted a lot of wide receivers. So, I think there's going to be a lot of – I think one of the of surprises is actually going to be an undrafted free agent, John Johnson with the Saints. I think the guy – I didn't know – I didn't know he got signed. He's – yeah, he got signed – the Saints signed him. I mean, he's – Good for him. He has, he has 4-5 speed. He's going to a team that can get receivers open mm-hmm. with schemes and obviously going to play with Drew Brees. See, I, I like that pick actually because um, Jawan obviously went from Penn State and I, a lot of people who I knew knew him and like said he's a very nice guy. And then, But he obviously didn't have the success, uh, success in Penn State that he did in Oregon. So I like that pick by the Saints. But, and maybe to catch some balls from Brees, that could be huge for him. I have another undrafted free agent that I like a lot, Anthony. You guys both know who I'm talking about. I like Levert Hill, the corner from Michigan, a he lot. You did say that, yeah. He he was a three-year starter at Michigan, and he was three three-time All Big Ten selection. He uh, he was sixth all-time in program history in pass breakups with 30, which is 
and he missed – what do I have here? He missed five tackles throughout his whole college career, and he he didn't have a single missed tackle last year. So if you have a guy who – he doesn't have great speed, but he has really good – he can make plays on the ball with, like I said, with 30 pass breakups. And uh, obviously if you have a corner that is willing to tackle, that's – pretty that something you need so not a lot mm-hmm. of corners want to tackle anymore so if you have one that can that's a plus it's always a plus yeah <laughs> i'm just gonna give a shout out to the one patriots on drafted free agent jj taylor from arizona just because the dude's only 5'5 five, five, 180 pounds there you go <laughs> shout out to my short guys out there <laughs> <laughs> shout out to my short guy, he says. But uh, Justin, I want to give out the, I want to give a shout out to Justin because he has three pages of notes right now that like he did his homework. I'm sure he. I'm, I'm, let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Show him off. <laughs> Got my handy dandy notebook. Hey, <laughs> I don't. I don't want to just. I don't want to talk out of my ass. I want to. If I if I start saying things, I want to make sure that I at least have the facts before I start saying stuff like you over. You're gonna be an all-time talent too. <laughs> I did not I did not say I that. But I think I, I did not say that, but I think he's gonna be good. I always yeah. like Jalen Hurts. I mean, um, I think he's a good kid. I just what he I did at I, Bama showed his character. I mean, he mm-hmm. took the benching very well. He didn't transfer till after he graduated as a grad transfer. I think he's a good locker room guy, but I don't know if he's going to translate to an NFL talent. And well, it works a- out, too, because Jalen Hurts' backup won a national championship for his team, and Carson Wentz's backup also won a oh, Super Bowl wow. for his team. If, so. if only you were, like, the first person to tell me that today or <laughs> any other day <laughs> recently. Hey, it works out. And now their roster, when you look at their depth chart, it says Wentz Hurts. So that also <laughs> it, it makes yeah. sense. You were the first person to tell me that one. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I just I just like his story, story personally. Like like he said, how he went, uh, what, he, what he went through and how he did that. I think um, that's a big thing that the Eagles players talk about. People who especially who come there saying it's like a family-oriented locker room. So I think that he's just going to fit right in. He's not going to put himself first. It's going to be the team first. So I think that's what they kind of look at when they draft. I don't know. But uh, so I think that's why I like the Raiders draft a lot too because the last two years you look at the guys they picked, they've been leadership kind of guys, guys that take go into the locker room, take over a leadership role. And I think that after a few years you're going to see that start to gel. They may not be the most talented, but they're definitely going to have a good locker room. And I think that goes a long way in the NFL. Did you say the Raiders? Yeah, the Raiders. If you have yeah. – all 53 guys all bought into the same thing and they're all fighting for the same goals. It's going to do a lot for the team. I mean, they may not have the most talent, but. No, I completely agree with that. Um, I mean, Justin's not going to agree because he doesn't like the, I mean, he does like. The I mean, they move on from Derek Carr. Like, don't get me wrong. Yeah. The they drafted thing. all these receivers, but they don't have anybody who's going to be able to throw them the ball. So, well, see, the, their car was good two years ago. What was it two, three years ago when they went like far in the or like we're doing good in the playoffs before what he got hurt? Like, they, I think he is a good, and it, wasn't he like the most, they're the highest paid quarterback at one point, too? Yeah. But I, I, I think that was premature. I don't think he deserved that. I mean, we'll see. Mm-hmm. But. I think Ruggs is a good addition. I think Josh Jacobs is going to build off the, off of his rookie year. Yeah. If the if the Raiders still had Antonio Brown, that that could have been a good wide receiver crew. I don't know if you guys agree with that. They don't have anybody to throw them the ball, so. They have Mark Mariota to relieve. Really I, so. I, I think I think you need a quarterback to throw the ball if you're going to have all these receivers. You need somebody who could throw the ball. Yeah, I'm like uh, number 15 on your wall. I don't think he could throw a ball at all. Nah, uh-huh. I don't think so either. <laughs> uh, oh, wait, that's Tom Brady, not Patrick Mahomes. I mean, it, it could be considered both. <laughs> but uh, so who after the draft, who do you think has the best chance to um, win the Super Bowl? The Ravens. Raven, I think there's only I, yeah. I'm just, AFC, I'm just sticking with that. In the AFC, there's two teams I could see winning: the Chiefs or the Ravens. And then the NFC, though, I think the NFC is wide open. You have a lot of talented teams. 
the, especially now with the expanded playoff and only one team getting the bye, I think that's why. I mean, I could see – I know that a lot of people, you guys don't agree that the Bucks will be there. I think the Bucks will make a playoff run. I think – I think they'll make a playoff run. The, the Niners are going to be there again. The mm-hmm. Packers will be there, but – they won't get anywhere because they didn't add anything to their offense. It'll be interesting to see what the Panthers can do. If if they can improve their defense at all, I think their offense is going to be good. So they might be a playoff team. See, I'm just scared with the Panthers. Healthy, with Christian, not the Eagles. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm scared with the Panthers just because Chris McCaffrey is a stud. Everyone knows that. But, like, I'm just scared that they're going to overuse him. I thought they overused him last year. I, I'm just, I just don't want to see him get I mean, They have two good young receivers, Curtis Samuel and DJ Moore. That's and true. they just got Robbie Anderson. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's going to be uh, very interesting. But I think I guess... their offense is going to be better. I mean, they spent all seven picks on the defense, and I think their their first two picks are great. I think. I agree with that. John Kinlaw, not not John Kinlaw, uh, Derek Brown and uh, Yeter Gross Matos are going to be studs on the D line. So it's going to be very hard to run against them. Mm-hmm. But they don't really have a great pass rush. The the loss of Luke Keekley, I think, really hurt them in that. In right, because I mean, they don't have a linebacker now. Mm-hmm. That's a hard. That's a a hard person to replace as well. I mean, yeah. if Keekley fit, like didn't retire early due to concussions, he probably would have been a top five linebacker of all time, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, he was definitely on the trajectory for that. I uh, yeah I I I could I could put it, definitely put him up there top five I agree with that. Um, what I guess instead of Super Bowl, who do you think was the most improved in this draft? Who uh, with their draft picks? Besides, I mean, I guess you're gonna go with the Ravens again, Justin. I'm gonna say Cleveland. Really? I like. I mean, they got help for Baker Mayfield. They got a tackle for Baker Mayfield. I like the Grant Delpit pick. Uh, and their last pick was Donovan Peoples-Jones. I like that pick a lot as well. I heard Peoples-Jones is um, good. If Baker Mayfield and Ob- Odell Beckham can get their stuff together, I I think that they'll probably be a pretty solid team. They have a good defense, and they added Grant Delpit. Um, they, they, they have a good secondary. Yeah. They have a good secondary. They added to their offensive line. Uh, they have – they have two very solid running backs. Uh, I think Cleveland could be a good team. It's just a big question mark around Baker Mayfield and Odell Beckham. Mm-hmm. I think the Colts improve their team a lot. It's just they're. It's going to depend on how well Philip Rivers can play. I mean, he gets the benefit of playing in a dome, but we saw last year that his arm talent is pretty much gone at this point. So. We'll see. I mean, I think they added two young guys on offense that are going to help them out because before the draft, they really only had one receiver in T.Y. Hilton. Adding Michael Pittman is going to be big, and I think adding Jonathan Taylor is going to be big too. I mean, they, Their they, secondary is really the only thing that concerns me with them. Yeah, I mean, they lost Eric Ebron, so they, but they still Jack Doyle. So. That's a good point. Um uh, before I pick, make or tell you mine, uh, Justin, I, I want to – would you guys – I mean, Justin and do you guys think that Odell Buckman will be traded before the season starts? Mm-mm. No. I, I, I was just seeing some stuff on that. I was curious what you guys thought on it. Um, I, think, I think they'll keep him and they'll try to ride that experiment out for at least another year. But if it doesn't work out and things start to turn in the wrong direction, I wouldn't be surprised if they traded him before the trade deadline. I think they still give it the full year. I think they'll tr- if it doesn't work out, they'll try to trade before the draft to try and get some draft capital to try and possibly replace them. Because, I mean, there is good receivers in the draft next year, too. I mean, you have mm-hmm. Chase out of LSU, uh, Justin Ross out of Clemson, Jalen Waddle from Alabama. They, so, potentially, they could try and use him as a trade piece to move up. It's fair. I, they, well, do you guys – I know, Justin, you don't like Baker Mayfield at all. It's not that I don't like Baker Mayfield. It's just – I don't know. I just don't believe in him as a starting quarterback. It's – I feel like he's trying to prove to people that he's somebody that he's not. He's, okay. And I feel like he's just trying too hard to make things happen. 
and that like he, that's why he threw all those interceptions last year. I don't know off the top of my head how many he had. I know at one point he had more interceptions than he did touchdowns. So I think he's trying to do a lot more than he's capable of, and I just think it's because of the type of player that he is. I think he just wants to, like I said, he just wants to prove to people that he's something that he's not. I think I agree. He did it in college because he wasn't facing the type of criticism you get in the NFL. Like in college, you don't really deal with national reporters calling you out on everything, and you don't have to answer to that. You just go out and play and act like an 18 year old kid. But in mm-hmm. the NFL, I mean, he has all these reporters coming after him saying he can't do this, he has maturity <laughs> issues, and he tried to fight back too much on that. I think if he just lets goes back to playing the game of football, I think you'll see improvements. That's what I mean. He's trying to shut all those people up that are that are talking about him, and he's just right. doing too much, and it's just not working. He's definitely listening to the noise way too much. I think if he shuts that out and focuses on playing football instead of trying to show the media that he can play football, he'll mm-hmm. be worth the first round, the first overall pick that they use on him. I, I like those uh, answers, and I, I think he's a good quarterback. I think that uh, – I think he's just – I like his cocky attitude. He's like – it's like almost like confidence. Wait, not Joe Burrow confidence, but uh, – maybe he's the he, type he, of player Cleveland needs at quarterback. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I, that's why I think, he, like, he's that answer for that organization yeah, right I mean, now. They're in a tough defensive division, so you need a guy that can fight back against the guys that are on defense that it gets in their ears. Uh, you know, yeah, but you can't, you hasn't... can't talk if you can't back it up. And he hasn't proven that he can back it up. That's true. I think that was his issue coming in, too. He tried to talk too much shit coming in. Yeah. Like, having proven anything. I mean, he tried to act like he was a top five quarterback before he even played it down in the NFL. And... I mean, he was. he's also a big 12 guy where there's no defense. So, obviously, if you're shredding defenses apart, you're going to come in with a little bit of an ego. Right. Which, I mean, I think that's why Burrow isn't going to be a bust, like most people say. I mean, he played in the SEC. He shredded the SEC this year. I mean, arguably, he had the best uh, season a college quarterback ever had going mm-hmm. to the top teams. I mean, they beat seven teams that were ranked in the top ten this year. Yeah, I, I think Baker Mayfield, um, for that answer uh... – I think he could be the answer. Maybe he just leads to the lay off the commercials and kind of focus on football for a little bit. But um, before my before I said I said my pick, I forgot to mention this. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the post bell notification, and buy my merch, even though I don't have any yet. But uh, anyway, so I I was gonna go for my most improved um, with the Bengals and Buccaneers. I like both uh, for the Buccaneers personally, just because they got Tom Brady protection. And for the Bengals, just because they found their quarterback and a wide receiver to go with that quarterback to grow with them. I mean, they were on opposing uh, teams, obviously, from the championship, but I think they're going to work well together. I think T. Higgins is – I think he's actually another steal in the draft. A lot of people don't like him. They weren't really high on him. I mean, coming in to this year college football, T. Higgins was a top ten pick in most mock drafts. I mean, his production fell off a little bit in college, but I think that's because – Clemson doesn't really play a good regular season. They coast throughout the regular season. They don't really put in much effort because they play in the ACC. They don't need to. And mm-hmm. then it comes to the conference championship and then the college football playoff. They play to their full capabilities. And if you watch those games, T. Higgins split it up. That, that might be uh, an observation for when t- uh, Trevor Lawrence comes into the league. But everyone, he's a stud, I think. Yeah, because, I mean, I noticed that, too, with him, because, like, coming off the national championship game against Bama where he was a freshman and people were already saying this kid's the number one overall pick if he would come out right now. And then what happened to him this year, I just think that Clemson doesn't really try much during the regular season because they know it doesn't matter that much as long as they go undefeated. They'll be in the college football playoff, and that's when they need to turn it on. And they're playing in the ACC where – they might be playing teams that have two five-star recruits total where Clemson consistently has a top five recruiting class. So it's just, the competition isn't there. That's true. What do you think, Justin? I agree. I think a lot of solid points being made there. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I, depending on the situation that Trevor Lawrence ends up in, 
I don't I don't know if I if I see it. I think if he I have the worst feeling he's going to end up in New England next year. Yeah, um, I agree. <laughs> but I I think that's what I think he's a project. I think it's one of those things where he's going to need time to develop. He, I don't think he's going to be a day one starter. I think it's he's going to need a little bit of time to develop. I think and, he needs to put on more muscle. Yeah, I mean he's six six and like barely two twenty. I think so. He needs to put on weight, or he's going to get eaten alive by NFL defenses. Yeah, um, yeah. imagine Chase Young going after him. <laughs> I mean, Chase Young did go after him, and look what yeah. he did in the playoff game. Mm-hmm. Chase Young didn't have a sack. Um, and then so would you? Uh, would you pick up Joe Burrow in your fantasy in our fantasy league this year? No. Mm-hmm. no. I don't, I don't, I don't think I, I don't think he's going to play right away unless the Bengals get rid of Dalton. He's not going to play right away. Yeah, yeah I, I Dalton's still the starter, but he'll probably only start for like two or three weeks unless they trade him before the season. So uh, that leads me to ask: Who from this draft class are you going to pick up to be your fantasy day one starter? Out of out of anybody, like, I'm going Hilaire. Uh, that's honestly, right, I get, I get Hilaire's the pick. flex option in fantasy this year. I think is going to be huge. Um, think about it; he's going to he'll probably catch like 10 passes out of the backfield. He's going to, he's going to, he's not going to be in every down back, but they're going to bring him in and Mahomes is going to get him the ball. He's going to touch the ball a lot. Mm -hmm. I think um, either him, I could see CD lamb being a big pickup. Um, Nah, I was going to say potentially Dobbins, but if you have a guy like Mark Ingram, I could see Mark Ingram being, more of a short yardage third down goal line type of running back uh mm-hmm. and using Dobbins more but other than that I'm gonna go with Hilaire yeah I'd honestly go with the same because out of all the quarterbacks taken I don't think any of them are going to be week one starters um the receivers I I wouldn't trust Judy with Drew Locke right now if Judy went to a team where they had a solid quarterback that was proven I would probably consider him as a starter in fantasy, but you don't know what's gonna, what type of production Drew Locke's going to give you, how often they're going to feed him the ball. Um, I could see C.D. Lamb putting up big numbers because they have Amari Cooper. They have a number one receiver that's going to get most of the attention from the defense. So he's going to be open on – he's more than likely going to be facing the number two or number three corner on the other team. And mm. – We'll see. Yeah, um, mine, um, I was looking it up, uh, who I was going to think, but I think I'm going to go with Jonathan Taylor. I like him a lot um, from the going to the Colts. I, 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 like I said earlier, I, I was a high on him uh, since I, when I was working at a Penn State game. I was told that to watch Jonathan Taylor play, play against Penn State, and like, I, that was my main focus watching on the field, watching him against West, or Wisconsin against Penn State. And I just love everything about this kid. I think he's going to be a future – I don't. I won't say Hall of Famer right away just because I don't want to overhype the kid, but, like, I think he's going to be a big name in the league. I think he's going to be a yeah, I can agree challenge. with that, but the fact that he's going to be splitting carries and the season that Marlon Mack is coming off of, I don't know how much he's going to actually get to play. Mm. So that's kind of an up in the air type of thing for me. The reason why I'm so high on Hilaire is because Damian Williams was the Chiefs' leading rusher last year. He barely rushed for 500 yards. They right. like that's that's a need on that offense. There's not really much that they do need. Plus, they're going to use Hilaire out in the passing game. Probably exactly. They're going to use him out of the backfield a lot. I think he's going to. I don't know. I just CPR league. Like I think Hilaire is going to be a very good flex. Off. I agree. The, my my other pick was I I I, for, I just forgot his name, but um, DeAndre Swift for the Lions. I think that could be a huge pickup for them. Uh, it's the same thing though because they already have Carry on Johnson. I mean, he's coming off of an injury, but yeah, he's coming off an injury. It's one of those things like you just don't know how productive he's going to be because there already is a starting running back there. Now, mm, my question true. to you guys is, which one of you guys is going to take Elair on me in the draft? That we- <laughs> well, you know, in, in your drafts, I'm always going to take 
uh, Travis Kelsey or Mahomes <laughs> you, but I don't know if I'll do that this year. I don't, I don't think I'm going to be that mean this year. <laughs> so no one knows. I, no one, know. I think I, I might have to go James White for my flex because, I mean, he's going to get fed the ball a lot. I mean, he's a running back that catches 80 balls a year, so. Well, for uh, people who uh, – I mean, there's millions of people watching this, uh, like, every every week, every episode I put out, uh, considering I just started. But, um, it, yeah, no one knows. But Justin's league, uh, I think since Travis Kelsey came into the league – or start, was a starter, I always took Travis Kelsey off Justin just because he was always hyped up on him. <laughs> and uh, so that's why he asked that question. But I think – I, this I year, can't wait to take uh, Gronk in the first round this year. <laughs> <laughs> someone's gonna someone's gonna take Tom Brady the first round or Gronk. I could see it. <laughs> oh, there's always that one asshole that takes Aaron Rodgers in the first round too. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's always Aaron Rodgers. It doesn't make any sense. It's always Aaron Rodgers. Always. It's uh this year it's gonna be uh, Carson Wentz for me. I, I'm gonna pick him up first round. <laughs> no, I won't do that. Solid pick. No, I, but uh. It, we 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 had a pretty good uh, episode, but do you guys want to add anything to episode in terms of the draft that maybe you wanted to talk about anymore? Uh, not off the top of my head, so I'm good. Sweet. So uh, we just went out out on a limb, grab a branch, grow this tree by doing something different, and be yourself. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>